in this video, we're gonna be helping out a subscriber with a layout for their new church. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. Just first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So I got an email from Justin Jefferson who was saying, Hey AJ, I watched your latest church build and I was wondering if you could choose my church for your next walkthrough. Uh, we recently were gifted with a facility that was under construction for another church. Unfortunately, the plans fell through. All of the walls are were not finished, so we have an opportunity to run wires. Yay! Um, currently, all the network and sound cabling is ran into a tech closet behind the stage. There are two network cables, two XLR inputs, two outputs running to the AV booth. Also, every room has Ethernet cable behind the TV. We looked into moving all the wires, but it cost too much. The plan is to keep the digital soundboard in the tech closet and run sound in the booth upstairs using a PC primary management uh, will be done in the AV booth and the tech closet will be a backup easy area for configure sound during practices or events. Um, current equipment, they have three 4K TVs in the sanctuary and 50 inch TV in all the other rooms, one projector in the fellowship hall, um, a laptop and two Canon cameras. Um, he has a budget of $4,000 and wants to build out a solution for his church. And he could probably get some more money if he can justify it. Um, they need a pro presenter system, a simple system to run the Behringer app that will control their soundboard, computer monitors and cables um, if need. Um, so they want to run ProPresenter from the AV booth, display it on the TVs in the sanctuary, and show a second monitor on the AV booth desk. Okay, that's similar to how I have at my church. Distance between the booth and all the other areas is under 100 feet, so that's cool. All of our TVs and projectors are 4K. They like to take advantage of that if it's possible. And we only have space in the AV booth for the cameras right now, but we need output output that to the fellowship hall, the cry rooms, the lobby TVs, the AV booth desk. And we don't need to show slides, but it would be nice. Um, we'd also like a simple solution in the tech booth to plug in a laptop, DVD player, or some other device primarily to run the three TVs in the sanctuary if feasible, also to the cry room TVs and fellowship hall. All right, so that's a lot. So let's go ahead and see if we can help out with that. Now first, and be honest, I actually recorded this video before, but then I did some research and now I'm redoing it all over again. He was saying he already has ethernet in all of those areas. Now, normally I've used this before, but when you go to this amount of TVs, um, it starts to get very, very pricey. So pricey that I honestly wouldn't even recommend it. So normally I've used HDMI over um, Cat6 extenders, which work great, but they're one-to-one, -one, or if you get an Aura, they go up to about um, four. So you would still have to stack them. Now, I really don't like doing stuff like that because for every device you add, it adds latency and drop frames. Frames get behind um, every time you see it. So for example, go to like a Target or somewhere where they have a wall of TVs, you'll start seeing that the image starts getting behind and behind and behind the more they add to it. And that's what we want to avoid. We want this to be as close as possible to where there's, if you do a clap test, if you clap, you'll get, you'll hear the sound the same time you hear someone clap in there. So I looked up HD Base T, which is a more professional version of that. And I mean, you're talking about just a, a matrix, a 20 matrix to handle 20 outputs, which is about the amount that Justin wants to use. You're looking at 
$3,700 just at that. Now I did bounce at some other places, but you would still have to start stacking ones if you got cheaper. And just in that solution by itself, you're around $3,000. So that's why I wanted to steer clear from that. So the bad thing about it is, well, the good thing is we can repurpose those ethernet to just a network jack. Um, I'm sure all those TVs have some type of network component into that so we can still use it. But what I would use is SDI to go to all of those locations. All right, so let's go ahead and cut over to my computer and let's walk through and show you kind of what I would do in this type of setup. So what we have right now is we have two cameras and we have our ProPresenter computer. Now I'm gonna talk about how we'll switch in between those at first, but realize he was saying that all of the cameras, and excuse me, not the cameras, the TVs everywhere are 4K as well as the projector and he wants to leverage that. But the only problem I would say with that is first, I don't know what type of cameras he's using. Um, the computer outputting 4K is not a problem. You just need to have the computer expect high enough to handle that, which isn't really a problem. Um, and then your cameras. So we'll work on that. Now, I pretty much, based off of the budget that was given on what could work, I'm not doing HD base T or um, HDMI over ethernet because of how many that he has. What I would use is something that I've used before, which is this um, mini converted SDI distribution, which does support 4K and it is for um, reasonable price. It's like $300 and it has eight outputs and one input. Now I would daisy chain these. So in other words, I would have one of these boxes placed in, I'll get three of them. One would be around here, which would service all of these TVs. Another one would be over here, which will service all of these TVs and the lobby. Then the third one would service all of the TVs in the sanctuary, the extra, I need another TV here in the AV booth, would service the TVs in the sanctuary, the AV booth, and the projector. So let's go ahead and add that real quick. All right, so <clears throat> this is how everything would be connected from an SDI point. Now, we would need to daisy chain these together so that we're getting our signal. So this one is being maxed out with all of the outputs that are coming from it, but our line in is gonna come from our main one right here. So let's do a line out, another line, just like another monitor would be coming from a line out from here and would be going into this one. And let's color code this one as purple so we can color code this one as purple so we know which one is coming out. And we need to do the exact same thing with this one. So that's how both of these are getting their signal. Now, there is another way you could get a smart video switch, a 20 by 20, which is around $2,400. And you could have one box that can handle all of this, but I think this will come out to be a cheaper price, especially since we have to fit in computers into this as well too. All right, so there we go. Now, what we need to do now is somehow get this in and as well as the input into our source. So this is the purple again, is just nothing but another output. So this is gonna be our main input that we're gonna be pushing everything to. And literally all it is is really plugging this in here. And this is our line in going into the distribution, um, the SDI distribution number one that feeds everywhere else. Uh, can I put it as blue? Well, I know what all these colors it makes is kind of hard to see. I'm trying to pick a good color that stands out. All right, let's do it as orange. All right, 
So that's coming, I'm just having that from the ProPresenter computer. Now, you could, ProPresenter does have a module to where you can put a Blackmagic Decklink 4K mini monitor inside of it, and now you have SDI out, which will plug directly into that. If not, you could always get a um, HDMI to SDI converter and then it could plug in that way. Now, the issue that we need to add to this is they also said that they wanted to have a laptop DVD player or something else that could sit up here in the front in the tech closet that could still be connected to all of this. Now, by with that being said, this makes me really think you need a switcher inside of this. Now, the A10 Mini, honestly, I don't think can actually work for this based off of what you're trying to do. Um, and I would honestly probably recommend the Television Studio for this. So with the A10 Television Studio, How this would work if we added this in here move this camera out the way what we will be doing is let's get rid of this the output from this is going to go to our distribution and then we can have these cameras connected to the ATEM oh, yeah, my arrows acting up I don't know where my arrows are acting like this. Let's move it down. So the cameras will connect directly to the ATEM. Your Pro Presenter computer will connect to the ATEM. Maybe it's too close. That's weird. <laughs> anyway, both of the cameras will connect there and you have the ATEM going directly to that. Now, you will also have the ability of having an aux out. Now, that aux out will allow you to have a different output in any way, shape, or form go to everything else. Now, I don't know how you would want that to work. So, like, for example, you could have the output going to the lobby, the aux out going to the lobby where you could selectively say, yes, show the same thing that's going on in the sanctuary, but... Um, well, let me reverse that. You can have the aux out go to all the TVs that are in the sanctuary so that they can just show, say, just directly what's coming out of ProPresenter for your slides. You could do it that way, and then everything else has a mix of video and ProPresenter, or you can do that in reverse. There's a bunch of ways. But just based off of what you're talking about, I think the ATEM Studio HD will work best for that, all right? So I think we got everything here. We got a bunch of cables and I, I think I should have changed the color so it makes it a lot easier for y'all to see. Um, but I think that will do that. So now let's go through and put the parts list together of what I was, well actually, hold on, we gotta go and build a computer. Let's go to PC Part Picker and let's go ahead and build out a system. And we're gonna start new. And if you can find it, cause I recently just upgraded this at my church as well too. It's a new processor that they, AMD's processor they gave a different name it's actually see this one is saying it's 12 nanometer I mean 14 nanometer we're looking for the 12 it's actually only $85 on Amazon oh well so what I would pull into this is one all right so let's go with this 
twenty. Let's go with this twenty six hundred. And it has a cooler, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, motherboard. Um, I like the DS three H's. So let's go with that. And go with sixteen gigabytes of memory. It's thirty two hundred megahertz. Now for a video card, I would do a sixteen sixty. really doesn't matter I go with the, the P300 that's what I've been using recently actually let's go back yeah let's stick with the P300 power supply wait a minute let's see what they said how much power this is using so far so maybe a, a 550 watt is fine Again, this EVGA looks good for that. No optical drive is compatible with that. Since he's talking about a music computer, it would be Windows, um, a Windows PC instead of a Mac. Um, software, I'm assuming he already knows about the um, Licensing for Pro Presenter since they're talking about wanting to get that. And then I'm going to use this SA230, which are monitors that I use. And boom, you're coming out to around like $753, $755 for a computer that can actually run that. And it's more than enough to run ProPresenter. This is almost similar to what I got. This is a faster processor than I have at my church, but almost literally, except for this and the graphics card, it's exactly what we're running. We're actually running a 1050 on our presentation system and it works perfectly fine. So that's what I, what I would add to this. So let's go ahead and start pricing this stuff together. So we see exactly how much it's gonna cost. So that's, let's just say. Um... All right, so at this point, I completely forgot about adding a hard drive. I would add a 512 gigabyte to a one terabyte NVMe, which would add 65 to $110 to this price. Pro Presenter PC, let's just say that that is 755, all right. Now let's go over here to BH Photo and let's go through the parts here. So we got around 19 to 20 cables are needed. I did 50 feet. Um, because of where we're placing them, it should be fine. Since we're not, all of them are not running from one location, it's running from there. Um, and actually I need to remove these. And each TV is going to need an SDI to HDMI converter. I did it without power supply because all of those 4K TVs have a USB plug in the back. You can get like a regular um, micro USB to go from there and power these. So when the TV turns on, it turns this on and you won't have it sitting on the entire time. We have three of those mini distribution boxes, which is good. Now I'm gonna come back in here and what I need to do is, I'm thinking the longest run, I'm gonna get three 100 foot cables just in case to cover that distance. Cause again, we're coming from the system into there. All right, so now with all the parts, we're looking at around with shipping and tax and all this other stuff we're looking at just in the components we're looking at about 37 3800 dollars so we're really pushing it 
for um, meeting this budget. And we are looking at it. We're right. We're about five hundred dollars over the budget now. You could drop out the Atom HD and go with the Mini, and then you would still need some converters on that. Let's do that. Let's take this out. Let's add the Atom Mini in this. Now, one thing I didn't mention is we're going to need another, um, you could do one Ethernet extension with this because what we need to, I didn't address is this system here because what we need to do is have an ATEM and we're going to change this to the mini here, which only allows us for inputs. So we have one, two three and then this is going to be four so this what i would recommend is actually i mean you can do sdi if you want to which would honestly be easier since you're buying all these anyway is to put an hdmi um to sdi box here in the back and then you plug whatever you want to into this box so that would be your laptop HDMI in your DVD player HDMI in which you will need something to remove the encryption from the uh, signal especially if you're playing a DVD um, stuff you need something to strip the HDCP off of the signal I'm not gonna go into that now but you would just have this box here and then this would run all the way to another First, HDI to SDI to HDMI, and then this is what will plug into line um, input number four for here for the A10 Mini. So you have this cable that's connected right here. Another SDI cable here. It will connect between these two. So that way, now you can plug anything that you want into here. This will go into the ATEM Mini. You select that source, similar to what I have here. You will plug that into here. So you would have camera number one, camera number two, the ProPresenter computer, and then number four would be the input from the front of the tech closet, whatever that you have plugged in there. And that's how that will work. So let's add those additional prices and let's see what we come up with. So we need a HDMI to SDI. We have that. We need to change that to two because the output from the ATEM Mini is going to need to be converted to SDI as well. That's what's going into the first distribution matrix. All right, and then we need to add one more of these and just for safety let's add two more of these cables all right so we're coming out to around thirty two hundred dollars so now let's go ahead and fix my formula over here and based off of the new changes we're right under the budget that he's talking about that's with the computer that's with all the connections everything that's needed so hopefully <laughs> without all my mess of going back and forth in this picture and everything that will work for you Justin I will have a link to all of the stuff that I would suggest in this as well as I'm gonna send Justin an updated version of this showing a full map of how you would connect everything and things like that and that's about it so thank y'all for watching justin hopefully that helps you in your church um really if you move forward in whichever direction you do please let me know i love to see what y'all do with that building and how you get everything set up and that is about it so 
If you want me to do any type of like overview or layout or suggestions for your church, for brand new churches or retrofitting stuff like I did at my church, please let me know. Hit me up here in my email and I will do my best to get to you. I know a lot of y'all have sent me some messages. I have get about 20 requests a day. So if I haven't done your stuff, it's just because I'm one person and I haven't gotten to it yet. So don't take it personally. I'm working my way to all of those things as well. So if you like this type of content, I would appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. This is AJ. We will see you on the next video later.